Right, so the days of Hajj are between the 8th of Dhul Hijjah till the 12th of Dhul Hijjah. So you have those five days with a voluntary uh, day on the 13th. Right, <clears throat> so we'll go through them um, in, in a little bit of detail. So on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, this is the Yawm Tarwih, you enter into Ihram in Makkah. You enter it from your hotel room, you pray you to Nafil, etc. And now you're going to wait for the buses to come to take you to Mina. Here you'll make the, you make the intention. <clears throat> Allahumma inni uridu hajj, fayassirhu li wa taqabbalhu minni. Oh Allah, I make intention for hajj, accept it from me and make it easy for me. Then you do the talbiya, you say, labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Now you arrive in Mina any time between sunrise till before Dhuhr. It may just be the case that your people take you there on the 7th. On the 7th after Maghrib. Because on the 7th uh, after Maghrib, it started, isn't it? The, the, the 8th has started. So you just go. Uh, in, in terms of uh, English calendar. Is that, is that clear? Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. So co corresponding to English terms, as soon as... Maghrib time comes in, they may tell you to get ready and they'll start taking you to Mina because of you got to wait for your order uh, because of the order of buses because otherwise it's going to be absolute mayhem. Uh, there is the day of rest. You just get accustomed to Mina. There's a day of worship. You'll pray your Dhuhr there, your Asr there, your Maghrib, your Isha, all at Mina. And your Imam of whoever is in your tent, he will lead you in the prayers. Uh, just engage in that day in, in Ibadah all day. Please don't treat it like a holiday. Please don't treat it like a holiday because people are just going to be chilling there, relaxing, all that. Recite some Quran, do some dhikr, send salawat on the Prophet. That's, that's what you're there for. Um, this is going to be a testing time because now you're going to be pretty much the place that you're sitting on is going to be um, not even as wide as this, where, what I'm sitting on. It's, it's just going to be enough for you to sit on. Now, Practical advice I will say to you is try to get there into the tent as quick as possible and try and get one of the beds where they the, the, like fold out cushions really try and get one which is right next to the partitions because now you're only sharing with one person otherwise you're going to be in the middle you're going to have two people on either side do you, you get the point? right? take an extra pillow with you or something and then when you're sleeping put it next to you because otherwise you're going to turn around and you're going to face over the person's face right next to you. Right? It's going to be a difficult time. Right? But just, just imagine how it, it, it was even more difficult back in the day. They didn't have any AC, they didn't have any fans or anything like that. Um, so that's the first day. On the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, <coughs> this is the second day, you pray your Fajr in Mina and then you leave for Arafah any time after sunrise. If possible, Masjid al-Nimra is there and they mention that this is where the Prophet ﷺ stood to give the final sermon. Uh, there is a different opinion on this, but some say it was there. If possible, go to Nimra and remain there until after Zawar, listen to the khutbah. Um, majority won't be able to do this. So don't try to do it, you might get lost. But this is the best thing that you can do. If this is not possible, just proceed to Arafah and remain there until sunset. Try to stand upon the rocks uh, at the bottom of the mountain of mercy, Jabal Rahma, but climbing to the top, etc., there's no basis for this. So you don't have to do this. You'll see people trying to get to the top. There's no requirement for you to do this. Um, so anywhere, all of that place is Arafah. So as long as you're there, you're all good. Um, <clears throat> And, and I've made this PDF as well, so those of you who want it, uh, just give me an email later and I'll, and I'll send it over to you. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice and easy to go through. Put nice little pictures on it as well to keep the general engaged. Right? Um, and you remain there until sunset. You try to stand upon the rocks if you can. If not, then all of it is a standing place. And then you stand there and you just make dua. Make dua, dua, dua. That is a day of du'a, that is a day of acceptance, that is a day of forgiveness. Recite the talbiyah as much as you can. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Uh, frequently recite, La ilaha illallah wahtahu la sharika la, 
lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer this is the best supplication to recite on the day of arafah even for those who are not going um pray your dhuhr and asr at arafah now here with the with the hanafis uh, this is the only time that you are allowed to combine your prayers one of the two times uh for others when you are traveling you're allowed to combine but for us it is restricted to here however the sahibain say that dhuhr and asr you can combine it at the entire time that you are there but imam abu hanifa said that you can only do it if you combine your prayers with the imam of hajj if you are not praying be- behind the imam of hajj then you must pray dhuhr and asr in its own time So I remember when I went with the group group leader of the 165 of us and then he goes to me lead the prayer you know do the combination I said I can't and he said why I go because I'm not combining uh, and he said why I go because we're not praying behind the Imam of Hajj and I'm not the Imam of Hajj and he goes you know what I don't know what your last problem is but you've got the ruksa go you take it you lead them so <laughs> that was just me because I wanted to you know you say that you want to follow Imam Abu Hanifa and follow him in it but there's no hardship there's no harm this is my personal thing that i did right so i prayed dhuhr in its own time i prayed asr in its own time but the first time that i went i prayed it them both together so it's entirely up to you there's no sin there yes no 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 because you're a traveler you pray two right so you do two and then two is not two in one no 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 yeah yeah so you do two with two intentions yeah yeah so so you do is it you stand you you make the intention i'm going to pray my dhuhr and my asr Right? So you pray two rakat, you do assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, then you stand up and then you pray two for your asr. Right? Yeah. No. There isn't. No, because after after you've prayed your asr, there's no uh, optional worship allowed to be prayed. Yeah. But you can do qada if you want. But remember you're not there to do qada. That's a day of dua. That's a day of dua. And if you're lucky, you know, Allah opens up the heavens when if it starts raining, get out there get out there get soaked get drenched stand there in the rain make dua when you're making dua on the day of arafa raise your hands in the air you know this this is this is what you see if, you know you see you know people say you know where do you get from raising your hands in the air to make dua we get it from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the night of badr the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said abu bakr said i could see the whiteness of his armpits he had his hands raised so high So what are you taking from there that look normally dua you can even make it without raising your hands but when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's in a state of absolute immersion when he's completely engulfed in his dua he's got his hands up so that is how that's why you're making the dua does that, does that make sense so when you're out there get out that get soaked alhamdulillah the both times that I've been in arafa Allah's allowed it to rain And we've, and we've got drenched and we were just there like, and I remember my aka I ran inside I said to everyone people are just chilling out inside the tents because you got questions and stuff there and they just say like reading from their little orad books and doing what they're doing I'm like go to everyone I'll go everyone is raining get outside now they're like eh? what do you mean it's raining we, we're in the right place we're inside go no Allah's mercy is descending get out now everyone run out man there's like a bunch of us just stood there and it was raining down we just there just making the arm and I'm making the arm leading the dua everyone's there saying I mean then another brother he says I want to lead the dua he's making the I was saying I mean then another brother tags in now my turn and everyone's just taking the arm and turns dua one by one one by one man but just just get out there just get out there make the dua you know and if people don't want to come out please don't force them that's just like as the group leader I asked them to come out so they came out But if you say to random people they'll be like don't don't put your piety on me or whatever you know you do what you need to do um so you do this and then after sunset when maghrib time comes you do not pray your maghrib at arafa you're going to stand there you're going to wait for your bus which is going to take you to muzdalifa you're going to go to muzdalifa and there when you arrive at muzdalifa you are going to pray your maghrib and your isha together here you will combine them whether you are with the imam of hajj or not and here you will collect 49 pebbles because why on the first night first day of hajj uh, uh, first day of stoning uh, the rami that's called the stoning you're going to throw seven stones 
on the second day you are going to throw 21 on the third day you are going to throw 21 so on the 11th on the 12th you're going to throw 21 so seven for each one and then if you want to stay there for an optional uh, on the 13th of the hijjah then you collect 21 more so what i would suggest to you is because you never know you might be uh, you just decide randomly that i want to do the 13th as well so i would say just try and collect uh, maybe a hundred pebbles if you can it's not hard there's pebbles everywhere because i think what these guys do is once people have thrown them i think they collect them back and then they go back and they throw them back into the area to make it easy for people right that all night if you want take a little bit of a nap have a little nap and then wake up and then go and do your voodoo make you know spend the night in the worship uh, and again in the morning uh, for fajr it's going to be difficult it's going to be difficult so uh <laughs> wake up earlier go and do your voodoo if you've got the squidgy bottle and you've listened to me life will be very easy for you otherwise you're going to be stuck there with me and waiting for you to do your voodoo um, once you've done that then now the 10th of the hijjah this is yom al-nakhar for us guys here that's the day of eid that's the Yom Al-Nakhar for you guys that are going. It will be the Yom Al-Nakhar, the day of sacrifice. It's the day of um, the blood flow. Because right? this is where the, the Qurbani is going to take place, the, the Udhiyah. This is the day for the stoning. You will pray your Fajr in Muzdalifa and you will leave for Mina after Fajr. And from Mina, when you get back to your tents, etc., you will be given your allocated time slots to go to do the stoning. You will go to do your stoning at the great... The bigger, uh, not the great, he's not great, the Billah, the Khaba'ith, the, the Satan, the Jamaratul Aqaba, Al Kubra, the big one, you will go there and you will throw seven stones. You will face the Jamarat with Makkah to your left and Mina to your right and throw seven stones. If you have lost your stones and you can't find them, then just do this the sign of just like a symbolization of throwing the stones this is why you need them get yourself a little pouch purely for the stones get them so then you've got them then throw them throw them throw them make sure you have extra just in case you lose them the dua that you make here is in the name of allah allahu akbar um, i pelt this pebble um, humiliating the satan and pleasing the most merciful um, bismillahi allahu akbar raghman li shaitan wa rida li rahman Please don't do crazy things. Please don't take your slippers off and start throwing it at it. Please don't throw, don't start swearing at it and stuff like that. You will see people do crazy things. Just let them do what they're doing. You just carry on. Then you speak to your tour operator and they will let you know when your sacrifice has been done. Then from here, you will have your hair trimmed. After the sacrifice, men will shave in the head. Women, one quote, as I've already mentioned. Now you remove your ikhram. Your restrictions of ikhram are now lifted. You can have, um, you, you could just go and do your, uh, get into, have a shower. You can get into normal clothes. Um, everything is normal for you now. It is permitted except for marital relations. You cannot get into marital relations. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to Umrah, not to Umrah, you're going to go to Makkah to perform the Tawaf al or the Tawaf al The Prophet ﷺ, on his way from Makkah to Mina to Makkah, he start, stopped at Wadi Muhassab, uh, I think the name is. This is where the boycott of the Quraysh uh, against the Muslims took place when the Prophet ﷺ was in Makkah, when he was approximately 50 years old. He paused there momentarily and then he went, if you, if you can do this, then do it. If you can't, that because of the time restrictions etc then you don't have to worry about it it's, it's not something which you have to do you go to Makkah and you perform the Tawaf of Ziyara and this can be performed any time up to the sunset of the 12th of the Hijjah so you can delay it if you want but it's better for you to do it straight away yes yeah I just, I just told you so like for each throw you do it yeah. yeah, but if it's going to be too much, then you just say, uh, Bismillahi Allahu Akbar. That'll be the easier thing. Because there's going to be a big rush. Especially you go with your mum, aren't you? Yeah, I'm right. So. Yeah, it, it might be difficult for you to, to recite the full one. So just, 
Bismillah, Allah Akbar. Just keep it moving. That's the only advice I can give you. And and you do it for the seventh one as well. So yes, seven. Yeah, so it's not seven places, it's one. Yeah. And you you're throwing it seven times, right? Um, now, once you've performed your tawaf, you need to do a sa'i as well. You need to do a sa'i. This is a sa'i of hajj. However, what I'd advise you to do is, this is the easiest thing to do. On the 8th of the hijjah, before you leave, what I would say is, go to, when you've entered the ihram and stuff, go and perform a tawaf, go and do your sa'i. Perform a tawaf, go and do your sa'i. This will count as your sa'i for hajj. You know, before you leave for, uh, for, for Mina, go and do this. If you do this then, then you won't have to perform this sa'i now. And the benefit of that is, when you do it now, uh, on the 10th, when you come back from Mina, after your tawaf of ziyara, it, there's going to be a massive rush. Because everybody's going to be doing it at that time. So if you can get it done beforehand, then inshallah, uh, it will be better for you. All restrictions of ihram are now lifted for you and you can return back to Makkah. Uh, on the 11th of the uh, sorry, return back to Mina. Now you just relax. You can relax, alhamdulillah, you're out of ihram and Mina will be a lot more enjoyable for you. When you're out of ihram, uh, Mina will be really nice for you. You know, it's beautiful because you know once you're going through it, you just think, oh man, this is really hard, I can't handle this. But you know, once you've done your tawaf and everything, you come back, so Allah just showers down peace and tranquility upon you. You just relax and you completely forget about it and you say, think to yourself, I can't wait to come back. Right? So Alhamdulillah, man, it's, it's amazing. 11th of Dhul Hijjah, you do the Tawaf of Ziyara if, the, if, the, if it was not performed the day before. Uh, so you go to Makkah and you perform that Tawaf. What time? Ji? What time? Uh, Any time after you're stoning, etc. Okay. Yeah. And all, all that time in your... Yeah, so you, you, best time when you go is that like, you go straight after Fajr. You can go. But you, you, you do, just do it on the 10th. It's going to be hard. Even if you're moving one inch at a time. Even if, if you have to go to the top floor. Slowly, slowly, just, just get it done. Just get it done. You know, because people just try to rush. They want to get it done like quickly, quickly. Let's do it, let's do it. No. Enjoy it, man. Just relax. Yeah, it took me 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It was just congested when we did it. It took us 40 minutes. Yeah, we were just enjoying it. We were just enjoying it. We were not, we, some, at some of the moments we weren't even walking. We were just relaxing and it's like, you know, like you're in a crowd and like crowd surfing. It's like that when people are just like pushing you around and you're just like, thanks, it's like you're on a conveyor belt. <laughs> but everyone who's pushing and doing other man, they come back and it's like, oh, that was really hard, man. But trust me, if, if you just relax and do it, and life will be so much easier for you. Around the whole of the building, eight, nine, and ten. Eight, nine, and ten. On the tenth, you come, once you've done the stone in, then you do it. So would you take spare clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take some, take some, take some spare clothes. What you're going to do is, um, after you've done the the stoning and stuff, and, and then what what your depends on total prayer. Because what we did was, we went to Makkah. We did the, the Tawaf of Ziyara, uh, Tawaf of Father. Once we'd done that, um, our hotel was there. Then we went to the hotel, we freshened up everything, we got changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just check, check with them. But otherwise, they have showers there, um, <laughs> right on top of the toilet in, in Mina. Uh, it might be different for you. Yeah. Yes. We had proper shabby ones, man. No, 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 this is after. Oh, yeah, yeah, after. When you mentioned the rule that everything is fine apart from marital relations, which part, which section was that in? Where did that come from? That's after you've done your, um, your, your hair cut. Oh, at the end, after yeah. the sorry, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so on this day now, you make your way to the Jamaras after midday. Right, so on, on the 11th, you were going to do the stoning, but now you're going to stone all three. So you're going to stone the small one, the middle one, and then the larger one. For the Hanafis, this has to be done after midday. Now, the problem that you're going to have here is the people are going to tell you to leave at a specific allocated time. You can leave. Now, remember, it's not midday 12 o'clock. It's midday Islamic. So when, when is that? 
Yeah. So it's the halfway point from the beginning of Fajr and the entry of Mag uh, Maghrib time. So as soon as they say you can go, if it's before, still leave. Don't argue and decide to slow down. You just walk slower. And once you get there, then you do your stone in uh, after midday. Uh, so you stone all three Jamarats on this day, uh, supplicating, etc. Um, and then on the 12th, from the time period between uh, after Zawar uh, until the night, you stone all three Jamarat with seven pebbles for each one. So the first, second and third. Then you leave Mina for Makkah before sunset if possible. If you can't leave, then you stay at Mina. If you leave, your Hajj is now complete. Your Hajj is now complete. Alhamdulillah, congratulations. If you didn't leave before Maghrib, then, sorry, if you didn't leave Mina before Fajr, sorry, let me just, uh, I just can't read my own writing. Right. You need to leave Mina for Makkah before sunset if it's possible. If you didn't leave Mina, then before Fajr, then you stone all three Jamarat with seven pebbles for each Jamarat on the 13th as well. Okay, so if you've left, then you're all good. But if you've stayed, this is the optional day on the 13th. Some people decide to stay, right? But on the 13th, most people, they leave. The tour operators, everyone, majority of the people, they leave. But on the 13th, if you want, if you want to stay there, then you have to do another stoning as well. Uh, so you stone all, all three. Now, before leaving Makkah, before leaving Makkah, because now your Hajj is complete, uh, you perform the Tawaf al -wada. This is called uh, the Tawaf of Sadr as well, the farewell Tawaf. This is your last act before you leave. So you do this uh, with the intention, you, you, this is for the sanctity of the Haram. So you do this final Tawaf and then you leave. Um, and this is Wajib. So now this is your Hajj complete. So now if I just break it down for you in terms of very small things. On the Fard and Wajib elements of um, Hajj. There are, number one is the Ihram. To make the intention and the Talbiyah. It's a precondition for your Hajj. Any time from after Zawal on 9th Dhul Hijjah till the true dawn on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. This is a fard in, to stand in Arafah. If you don't stand in Arafah, your Hajj is invalidated. So there's no point. Your Hajj is completely invalidated. Your Tawaf of Ziyarah from the true dawn from Fajr of 10th of Dhul Hijjah till sunset of the 12th of Dhul Hijjah. This is the timing. You have to do this. If you haven't done this, your Hajj is invalidated. You have to maintain the order of the days. So for example, somebody goes to Arafah uh, on the 8th and instead of the 9th. And he goes to uh, he goes and does the 12th of Ziyarah um, on the 12th. No, because that's allowed. So you, you, sorry, you go on the 9th. That's, that doesn't count. So that's, you, you have to keep the order. Uh, you must abstain from intimate relations. These are the fard parts. You must do these things. Otherwise, your hajj is completely invalidated. Then you have the wajibat. The wajibs, if you do not stick to these, then you, you have certain issues. And the issues here are that you have to do a pay a compensation. You have to pay the expiation, the kafara. So standing at Muzdalifah after true dawn on the 10th, this is a wajib. Doing the sa'i of hajj is a wajib. The rami, the peltin, this is a wajib. The qurbani, the hadi, is a wajib. The shaving of the head is wajib. Not delaying the ihram beyond the miqat, this is a wajib. Delaying maghrib and isha till Muzdalifah, that is a wajib. Maintaining the order between the pelting, the slaughtering and cutting the hair. Right, so you must make sure that you have got word that your uh, animal has been sacrificed, and then you cut your hair. If you haven't, then it is wajib for you to maintain the order. But this is only with the Hanafis, with um, the Shafis, etc. You don't have to maintain the order. And then the tawaf al wida, the wida to, to to the farewell tawaf. This is a wajib as well. So they are the days of Hajj. Do we have any questions on that? Yes. You said the Rabbi, you can do the same. We have the 
Yeah. No, 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 no. I said the order, the order is of the days. Yeah. So the, not not this sa'i. The sa'i can be brought first, right? And in terms of the uh, the apps which are wajib, that is the stoning, the the um, the sacrifice, and then the cutting of the hair. That is the wajib of those. But when I'm saying the wajib, I'm talking about the days. Right, so so the Arafah you can't do that on the eighth. It has to be on the ninth, and the Muzdalifah uh, after Maghrib. Right, so you can't go to you can't you're not going to be in Muzdalifah, for example, on the seventh. Right, so that's that's the order I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Because because you're not you then you're not doing the Hajj then, then you're just doing whatever you want to do randomly. Yeah. But remember, if you do the Sa'i first before uh, the tenth then it must be accompanied uh, with ihram and it needs to be in- accompanied with the istiba and the ramal and then you go and do the um, sa'i. But if you're doing it on the the, the, the tawaf ziyara uh, on the 10th, then you don't need to be in a state of ihram. Yeah. 